Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Titus County Commissioner's Court, and it is 9 o'clock straight up. Let's begin with a prayer and a pledge of allegiance, if you'll join me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our gathering today, and we pray that you will grant us the wisdom and direction that we need in each agenda item. We know that our decisions impact the residents of this community and of this county, of our employees, as well as um, well as our surrounding counties, in fact, and we just ask for that direction that we lack. We ask that you would uh, preside over this meeting. We pray for our first responders, our servicemen and women, wherever they serve, Lord, that you would bring them home safely, protect them while they are on the job. Thank you for this uh, beautiful day as we transition into spring. And once again, we ask now that you take over this meeting. In Christ's name, amen. Once again, welcome to our second Commissioner's Court meeting of the month, January the 25th, 2019, and it's just a few minutes after 9 o'clock now, and we will begin with our item one, and this is public comments time, request for information on non-agenda items in accordance with our Open Meetings Act. If you would like to speak on a specific item later on, let me know at that time. Otherwise, if there's anybody that wants to address the court or make a comment on a non-agenda item, this is your time. All right, we'll move on then to item number two, where we consider possibly approving minutes from our February 11th meeting, our last meeting a couple of weeks ago. Make a motion we approve the minute. We have a motion from Commissioner Parker to approve that set of minutes. Second the motion. We have a second from Commissioner Fish. All in favor of approving the minutes from our last meeting say aye. Aye. Opposed, there are none. Joyce, thanks for preparing those as always. Item number three, we have three guests with us today. A presentation by our friend Dr. Hurley Miller, our District 4 Extension Administrator, and he's got a uh, long-awaited presentation for us today. Come on up and bring whoever you've got. We've got Lou Ann Rollins there in the back, and we have this young lady that Hurley is going to introduce us to. Good morning, Judge and Commissioner. It's a great opportunity to be with y'all this morning. Like I said, it's been a while uh, <clears throat> being here in court, but I appreciate the opportunity to, to come here. First of all, to thank y'all for you alls support of our agency. Uh, our agency could not do what we do without the support of the Commissioner's Court. We really appreciate that. Uh, with the Judge and Commissioner Cop we have here in December. It's been an outstanding opportunity to educate the Judge and Commissioners, and I really appreciate y'all's support allowing us to have that here. Um, <clears throat> we had an opportunity to uh, look for a new county kind of extension agent uh, here for agriculture, and we had an opportunity to interview about 15 to 16 different people for the position. Uh, we uh, narrowed the position down to an individual that we thought would be able to do the job effectively, has experience and background that will do an outstanding job as a county extension agent, um, Ag and Natural Resources. Her name is Callie Zeller. A little bit about Callie. Uh, <clears throat> she has a graduate, she was a graduate assistant at Tulsa State University for one year. Prior to that, she was an intern at the Noble Research Institute. Uh, also the summer intern for AgriLife Extension in McLennan County. Her current background uh, is a BS in plant science, um, plant and soil science from Oklahoma State University, a master's in agriculture and natural resources from Tarleton State University. Platt has a lot of experience. I think it would be very beneficial as the county extension agent in ag and natural resources here and uh, come from a long line of individuals in the agriculture extension world. And so I really think that she'll do an outstanding job. Um, if y'all accept Cali, she will actually start March 1st. Uh, this uh, 2019 as a county extension agent ag and natural resources. So this is Callie right here. Outstanding. Well, Callie, uh, come on up to the mic. Anything you want to tell these guys about yourself? We just welcome you here today, and we will give you an answer here pretty quick, I would imagine. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I grew up in a home with a mother as a teacher and a dad as an extension agent, and so 
I truly understand and appreciate um, agriculture and education and I know what it can do for young people in the community. Um, I like to think that I'm an example of what 4-H and the Extension Service has done for somebody. So I'm looking forward to hopefully starting here and uh, building the 4-H program and providing really good uh, agriculture education opportunities for our community members. Thank very you. Very good, very good. And I did provide your resume to the commissioners when you first supplied it to me, so they had a chance to look over that. We appreciate the effort that you've put into this search. We know it's taken a while, and there was a freeze there for nearly a year, and we couldn't do anything, but I know you got back on it, and we trusted you to get the job done, and, and uh, if, if you're happy, we're going to be happy, I think. So today, I guess we've got uh, possible action to follow. So this is the recommendation from Dr. Miller is that we uh, welcome Callie Zeller to town as our new extension agent. And if that's your wishes today, I need a motion to do so. Motion in, uh, is made by Commissioner Riddle. Second the motion. And a second by Commissioner Fitch. All in favor of approving this selection as our new Ag and Natural Resource Agent for Titus County, Callie Zeller, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? And there it is, unanimous. Again, we thank you, and Callie, we welcome you. You'll be here March 1, so just in a few days, like maybe maybe this weekend. Okay, have you picked out a place to live yet? Yes, I'm in the process of buying a new home. Very good, very good. Well, we welcome you. You know where the courthouse is. Come on down anytime. You've got some good good uh, wisdom to to latch on to there at Lou Ann, and I hope that you will, will uh, enjoy your uh, new home here. Okay? Thank you both. You're welcome to sit and listen to the rest of this stuff. You're welcome to go about your business. All right, please. Okay. Anybody need a picture? <laughs> well, let me tell you who this is. This is Cal. This is Hurley, Dr. Hurley Miller. He is he is our high up in the ag extension world, and he has brought to us a new selection here. That uh, and this young lady here, Callie Zeller. We've got a county agent. <laughs> you can discuss that with her later. Do you need a picture? Do you want a picture for now or anything? I'll let you get that set up. Uh, you're good. Okay. You're good. All right. Well, while they are setting up, uh, let me say a few words here about item number four. This this item came not as my idea. This uh, this came as an idea from one of our constituents who contacted me and said how much he appreciated the segment that we had each week. Uh, that we had our meetings where the uh, where our uh, where Roger Ledbetter would give us an update on the word the roads that were being worked on and what the status of those was and what he was planning to do in the weeks ahead and he said I would sure like that if the commissioners would give a brief statement as to what projects that they are working on so I know this is the first time here today and you may or may not be prepared but this is not a non-action item but this would just be a chance for you to give minutes worth of instruction to the audience uh, whether they are here or whether they are listening uh, to our recordings and tell them what you're working on and what's going on within your precinct if anybody has a comment at this time I'd love to hear it from you uh, but let's plan on this being a regular item on our agenda in the future where you would keep everyone informed all right I'll start on this end Commissioner Riddle anything that you would like to say at this time Pull that uh, since since the gentleman that asked for this is relying upon our recordings that he can watch on the computer. Let's be uh, sensitive to that need and speak into our mics. Our road hands have done all the PMs and required uh, as preventive maintenance on all the equipment, uh, change oil, grease them, and so forth. Uh, and we've mostly been patching and cleaning ditches, and we've. Uh, Preparing uh, County Road 1450 for seal coat later in the year. The ditches and the culverts, about five culverts we put in uh, that needed to be replaced and getting that ready. 
that's been about it. With the patching and the rain keeps coming, so it's a constant battle to fight that. Okay. Thank you. Well, my guys, we've been out uh, PM and uh, getting all the oils changed in our pickup trucks and dump trucks and equipment, and we've got a lot of supplies ordered to change in our tractors. We've been patching the roads and keeping them passable, getting ready for uh, some projects this summer, uh, tearing out some soft spots and uh, smoothing up some places that will be ready to seal coat for summer. We've uh, picked up all kinds of trash and debris. Probably in the last six weeks, we've probably picked up 30 tires in my precinct. It's crazy, all the tire dumping going on. So uh, we're all out together this week, the whole county, tearing down the uh, stockpile out on 271 North. So we have a, a time limit. We've got to get that moved. So we're going to try to get most that, of it this week. What that means. Um, we got... From the, the state gave us 9,600 yards of wrap, reconstituted asphalt at the pile out on 271 North. So 1,800 yards of that is going to be for Chapel Hill School for their bus barn that they're building right now. So uh, the state is going to measure that pile, what's left of it today, and tell us what to leave for Chapel Hill School. And we're going to work together. We're going to try to knock it out this week, unless some emergencies come up. and. Uh, get most of that going. It may take two weeks, but we only have, we have four weeks left and it's got to be gone for this year. And then in October we'll apply again for another stockpile, whatever that we're required that they can give us from the state. So it's good stuff. We use it for everything. Any particular roads uh, in your crosshairs? Well, if, you know, I'm new to this as far as road numbers, uh, knowing the exact road numbers. So road number wise, no, I, I'll have to be more prepared for that Good to tell enough. you. But yes, I've already got some plans for some definite roads we're going to seal coat. Okay. Commissioner Applewhite. Just like the rest of them, we've been patching throughout the county and uh, we went there last week on uh, 3920 and 1820. And uh, the 3920, we was cleaning out ditches and cleaning out culverts so we could, uh, the water would go through. And we're out there today on 3365, replacing two culverts out there today. I've been working with uh, uh, or trying to locate a uh, tank. I've got a, a big tank. It's a eight foot, and I'm gonna have to go back with a bigger, bigger tank. Probably gonna be closer to ten. But I've been trying to get prices and all uh, for this. The whole bottom of this one is caved off, and the the uh, or brought it out, and the it's beginning to to sink on each side. So the eight-foot tank is now down to about seven on that one end, about half of it. And uh, so it's beginning to sink, so I've got to get something done about that. That's on 43.25. Uh, still got to get with the uh, land on owners on each side because we've got to do a little work on both sides there to, in order to get that uh, prepared and ready. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, have been picking up limbs and cutting a few trees that have we're leaning out over the road that, that we're at some point going to fall and, and trying to trying to get that taken care of before it did happen, get called out at night or something. Uh, we uh, installed a culvert on one of the roads that I'm ready to seal coat. Uh, this culvert had a limb that was taking half of the culvert that had grown all the way through it. So we... Uh, uh, went ahead and replaced that. We wouldn't have to dig it up after we seal cut the road, and that was County Road 4550. So we've also been patching and, and uh, trying to get everything up to and hold it in place with the, all the rain and all that we've been having. All right. Thank you. Hey, Judge, the one thing I remind everybody, any work y'all do on any roads that we can apply towards that bridge still, please identify it and get it. This one, Carl, that, that I've got to replace that tank in, is uh, it, it's on the list. Good. So Good. Uh, Good. it it'll and it may take up the biggest part of, of mine because it's it's going to be about a probably the way I way it's looking right now somewhere around fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars just to replace the tank. Okay. 
and that's not counting the equipment and all that we'll be using. That's just the, the right. tank and getting it in. Because we'll have to have someone to to set that tank for if we we don't have anything that'll handle that size tank, and uh, so we'll have to have someone to set it for okay. us. That's good. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Item number five: Discuss the maintenance, barn supervision, with possible action to follow. I had uh, asked, been asked by a couple of commissioners to put this on here just to review uh, what we have decided previously regarding supervision over the maintenance bar. Uh, Dana or Jimmy, would you care to comment on this? Uh, well, we, uh, back, I don't know exactly the date, but November, we, uh, December. I, I here it was. Think, yeah, no, November the 19th. Yeah, I, I was thinking it was somewhere back right after the the uh, unit system was voted out. We decided to uh, uh, let Dana, he's not overseeing the, the uh, maintenance shop. He is just a go-between for the rest of us because he's right there handy. If they've got something that they've got a question about that they need to, to refer to us about, then they can, can call him and he, he can get in touch with us or whatever needs to be done. Or if something needs to be picked up and they haven't got time to go get it, then Dana goes and picks it up for them. Uh, and uh, that, uh, that's been in question and, and we just felt like that it, that it needed to be clarified that it was an action item that we did do that and, and that Dana was the go-between, not actually the supervisor uh, of the uh, maintenance shop, but, but the go-between uh, for us. Let me read. This was from the November 19th meeting, and this was one of the bullet points that came out of the workshop. This is how the minutes stated. It says, the maintenance barn will go under Commissioner Applewhite's supervision on 12-3 of 2018. Jeff Cates will begin reporting to Commissioner Applewhite at this time. That was the time when we were in transition, and, and Roger was working out his final days as the, uh, as the supervisor over all county road maintenance there under the unit system and so the decision was made on apparently effective 12-3 to do that. All right, so how do you see this working? If anybody has any uh, anything to say or any problems or kudos or whatever for these gentlemen working in the barn that they they need to deal with with Dana? I mean, practically speaking, what does this mean? As far as I'm concerned, they have done an excellent job. Uh, they, they, anything that I've carried up there, they've worked on several pieces of my equipment, and they've got it out in a timely manner. They, uh, uh, and you know, if I need something, all I got to do is call them. And if it's, I had a one of my blades had a flat on it. They come out, took the tire off, went and got it fixed, and then we took it up there because the cylinders were leaking on it and uh, they've got it up there right now working on it. I have not had a problem one out of out of it, hadn't had anything uh, that uh, have been in question as far as I'm concerned. Commissioner Applewhite, you still willing to continue in this capacity? Yes, sir. Any comments on this? I uh, just, they're doing the, you know, everything we ask them to do, they, they're presenting it out and in a timely manner and I, I appreciate them what they're doing. Okay, if any of the commissioners uh, wants to bring something uh, to their attention you prefer them to go through you well if it's you know they can you know if they want to go to the shop like i said that's that's fine with me but like i said i'm just really just like a go-between and i'm not uh, i don't tell them what to do and uh you know they don't i surely don't put my equipment over anybody else's and because uh, well sometimes there will, uh, will undoubtedly be situations where uh you know, they need, they need to speak to somebody right. about a concern that they have. Right. And in a case like that, is it your preference that they go to you first? Yeah, be fine. Yes, sir. Okay. Gentlemen, either one of you. Okay. I'd like to explain, first of all, the maintenance barn, the situation. Uh, the county maintenance barn is not like a retail shop where we go see them, the customer takes their truck in or equipment or anything. And uh, I mean, I'll try to describe the difference. 
the county maintenance shop makes minor repairs as needed. He has the tools and knowledge to determine what is required repair, if it's a minor repair. If it's a major repair, we have to take it to a shop or somewhere. For instance, now we have a truck in Longview because they have to do it, we have to do all the stuff. And for a year, and I for one don't want to make a decision on, as a commissioner, on another commissioner's assigned equipment. The equipment's assigned to me, and if, uh, for instance, uh, I had a truck that was overhauled prior to me taking business and taking office six years ago. They had a new engine in it. It's continuously stayed broke down. I'd, we have to haul them to Longview because we don't have the computers to, for all of that stuff at our shop. So we, uh, after four trips at over 2,000 apiece, I made a decision to park that truck and get another one because it had a rebuilt engine in it already. But I made that decision. I don't want, and, I, and we've operated since I've been here, six years, and the mechanic, whoever it was, would do the minor repairs. Like I said, excellent job of doing them. And when uh, it had a question about how much money to spend on one or should we replace it or time, he'd go to that commissioner. I don't see any need for a, a person to be accountable. Right, we just to replace the election manager. To manage the shops, we've had one mechanic for since I've been here, I guess before that time, uh, and he, uh, he'd come to the commissioner that had the business with. He didn't have to go through anybody. I, 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 for one, don't want anybody coming through me, and I wouldn't want it if I was Dana. But, uh, and I don't uh, think it's at all necessary. It's a, we should hold. We were hired Jeff with the unit system, and he was he was required to be the lead man and make the decision what we work on next and stuff in the shop and direct the other other person. I think he's perfectly capable of doing that. I think he's perfectly capable of coming to the commissioner that he needs to talk to about a piece of equipment and explain to him, I don't know whether this is what it's going to cost. You want to spend the money? And uh, so I, I think that it's, uh, it's just a waste of time. And I would hate to be the commissioner that's responding to that. Then I go out and tell my constituents that I, have to, I can't keep my roads up because I have to manage a shop. I don't think it's necessary. I think that Jeff is perfectly able and capable of being accountable. And everybody should be accountable to somebody. And I think if when he goes accountable to Dana, then he comes to us, I think we lose, the, we lose something. And I just don't think it's a necessary position. We have a, I think the commissioner should decide, like the hours they work, you know, or something like that. And we could uh, have a workshop or whatever's required. And we should discuss those things. And as far as Jeff being a reporting to one person, I don't think that, uh, that that's necessary at all. I don't think any of us is going to question his ability. None of us are mechanics, and I've never done it in the six years, and I've never even heard of anybody having an uh, operation like that. The unit system, he had to report to the engineer, so this was it. I wasn't here for that meeting when they decided to put somebody in charge, but I don't think that... Uh, we need anybody in charge. I think it's. I think we lose accountability uh, for the shop. Uh, I think that I I have as much responsibility for that shop as Dana or John or whatever. I've never had an argument with a commissioner. It's, we all have a budget. We have to work on. If we decide to spend twenty five thousand dollars on an engine, that's our decision, and we'll have to pay for it because we won't have the material to buy. So it'll affect us as a commissioner if somebody else starts doing that. And I think that I need to be involved when it's my equipment. I, I, I want to do as much as I can, as, with a, as cheap as I can. But I don't need a, somebody going between me and Jeff or whoever we make responsible for the shop. You know, I, and I think that, like I say, we should get together, do an hour, and I can live with either system, but I don't, I don't, I really think it's a waste of the taxpayer's time, and I think it's a waste of Dana's time. Or any commissioner that has to go through another, be a go between the shop and, and the commission. I think it's, I just don't agree with it. I think it's a bad system. I think we lose accountability to our voters, our taxpayers, and, and the mechanics. 
you want to say something? Okay. I've had good dealings with uh, the mechanic shop, and I never have had to go through it. Dana for anything. Uh, Jeff and Terry both contact me directly, and I usually bring them whatever I need, tell them directly what I want, and I've always been in charge of every dime that was spent, and uh, I really approve of how they run the shop, and I like their efficiency, how fast they get things done, how much they explain to me, they take time out explain something to me where I go back to my own shop and fix it, so uh, that's been really good. So as far as uh, Dana making any decisions that really bother me, and I don't have a problem with it, um, and I still feel like I'm in charge of every decision that's made anyway over my equipment, over my precinct. Um, Dana, what, what other things did, would you might be, give advice on or something that well, we don't hear about it anyway? Well, know? the only thing that really we run into is the big, like the big decisions where the money is a couple of hundred dollars or four or five hundred dollars or two or three thousand dollars. As far as your own equipment, uh, if you want to spend it on your equipment, that's yeah. fine. I don't have no Usually on our equipment, we all right. know what's your own, going your own on stuff. when we break it in there. Right. Uh, and One thing that I'd, I'd like to, to comment on, too, one reason this was started back when it was started, and this was before Jeff and Terry's time, too, the way I understand it, was that they didn't have anybody to pick up their time sheets and all. And Philip at that time was, was in precinct three. He would, would pick up their timesheets and, and sign them and, and bring their timesheets in. Dana is still doing that. That's, that's another one of the things that he takes care of. Uh, and I, I don't want to have to drive in up here to do that. And so, you know, I, I think it's a good thing for, for Dana to be right there close to do that. Uh, keep them from having to drive up here to turn their timesheets in. They can, can uh, you know, they can bring them up when he brings his. So uh, that was another reason that this was started in the beginning, was was for that reason. Are you aware, uh, are every morning, James Webster goes down to the shop and picks up paperwork. Why do we have to have somebody else to carry the paperwork to the, to the office? He gets all kinds of invoices and paper and brings up here every morning. He goes to that shop. So I, I don't understand why that's a factor at all. Well, it, it run pretty good like the other way for, like I said, six years. I never had a problem. I never, I never seen it. And like I said, I'd hate to be a commissioner and, the, and the, my, my constituents and taxpayers talk to me and I, I, I wouldn't want to tell them that I, I had to run the shop or be involved in the shop or go get parts for the shop. You got parts people all over this world. And like, and like I say, we get a lot of things we should discuss as a group. In other words, we have a, you know, what time the mechanics start and stuff in the morning. I, I, I disagree but very bad. Why at six o'clock in the morning, you're not gonna get any parts work delivered at six o'clock. And I think they should be there when the, when the people are. We've done it with one mechanic all these years. The second mechanic drove the truck, picked up materials. Ricky Joyner did. He did all of the sheriff's cars, all of their work, tires, everything. He did all the tires on the equipment. If you had a backhoe tire or something like that, he would take it off and either get it fixed. For years we've had it, for six years, until now we've got two mechanics, and we still do the same thing, the same amount of work. If it's a major thing, they send it to somewhere that needs to be done. We don't There's have the computer. We several more pieces of equipment now than we had then, too. Seven more pieces of several equipment. More pieces, uh, several pieces of equipment that we didn't have six years ago. Like what? Uh, we just bought a reclaimer. Oh, we've got yeah. that, a that's packer. True. I can name you several pieces of equipment that we've got. We, that's but, re we replaced the reclaimer. We, we didn't use one of that, that dump truck that I had for, for uh, we didn't use it. Y'all didn't use it at all. The haul truck, the one that pulls my backhoe around all day, they never used it for the two years because it had a problem with it. And I thank God, I think we've had a problem with it for five years, but that Terry, I think, fixed that. He found the problem and fixed it about a month ago. And that's a, it, there's just things that, 
that I don't think that there's any difference, and it was. I don't think there's any difference that we got other than can we just spend a little more money. And I don't think that make, you know, I think we do need somebody in the summertime. Summertime, we need somebody to help. That's when we can get the most work done on roads. And, we, and usually that guy did like the sheriff's cars and tires. We always hired a part-time mechanic every year, June, July, August, and September. And we still need to have a part-timer at that time. Not, and I don't, I'd like to be in on decision. I think all of us should be in on that. I don't think we need a manager to, uh, per se. I think that Jeff is capable of being the lead man. He directs the work. You work on this or decides what we're going to do today. And we're not there. None of us are mechanics. I'm not a mechanic. And I wouldn't dare tell one of them how to fix something. And I, and I sure don't want to be try, responsible to supervise them or be their go-to. But I can live with it anyway. I, I, I wasn't here when we we uh, y'all voted on it. I was out uh, being ill. Uh, I, but that's the way I feel about it. I, I just think this unnecessary, and I think we all should get together and have workshops, I guess, to call it our meeting and decide like the hours, I'd really, I'd really like to, I'd really think that, and there's several things, you know, that need to be discussed, but I think it's a joint deal. I don't think it's a one person deal. Well, on their, on their hours, we're just, they're not here but 30 minutes and they were uh, from 3 to 3.30, they're not here. Sure. And they're not here from 3 to 3.30. And I don't, you know, most of the guys are wrapping up between that time there, and they're, they're not really, uh, I think, at 6 o'clock deal, because Jeff has worked on some stuff for me in, from the day before, and I've had it when I come to work the next day ready to go with it. Or oh, he couldn't do it after 3.30? Uh, well, I'm just saying, though. They, they whatever come, it is, it's, uh, you can't get parts at 6 o'clock in well, the morning. Well, if they already have them, they've huh? got the parts from the day before. Oh, you can do it. Well, if the guy comes in at... They leave at three, and the guy coming at three thirty. You don't have the opportunity to talk to well, him. No, you're not going. Well, he don't know. They don't have the opportunity to show him or tell him what's wrong. No, yeah. I think we. I think that's a mistake. But anyway, I could go on and on. There's several things that I, I would uh, like to see change. But I'm sure there's and, and and, but I think it's. I can give you one good example. Hinton put a spent twenty thousand dollars on the international truck. I thought, my goodness, he did. I told him, I said, I wouldn't do that. Well, listen, that truck runs good. According to my guys, everybody likes to drive it. Uh, internet. You know, it still runs good. Three years later, it, it's a good truck. So Hinton made a good call. You know, so it, and I, would, I wouldn't have done that, but that's his, comes out of his budget. And I think that since if we were responsible for our budget, we should be responsible for getting our maintenance too, each one of us, not somebody else, not one of us. And I certainly don't want to be the one. Tim, how many police cars have we put on in the last six years? How many police cars have we put on in the last six years? How many have we put on? How many we have we got? At, well, more, how many more police What'd cars? What you start with and what do you have yes. now? What's oh, the total? It's the same. 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 We just rotate them. <coughs> just rotate them. Yeah. Yeah. Take four off and add team. four. Take three off and add three. Yeah. Add three. Well, no, we're going to put three on. We're going to, well, we're going to keep one for a spare. So I'm trying to put more miles on. So we're right. trying to reduce the amount of cars we're getting. But uh, so we're going to add, we're just, so add one, but that's just for a spare. It's not the one that's going to be driven daily. Right. But, uh, but yeah, we're going to be down in, down in two. So yeah, we did add one. But like I say, it's not a full time for one, though. Right. Are you, are you satisfied with your part I'm on this? Satisfied. Because I know that, you know, it takes a, you know, they they stay pretty busy. They are busy. And it's uh, they do a great job. As far as the sheriff's great car, job. they got to be their number one priority, you know, because they're out protecting the citizens. And uh, like I said, it's, I don't make a big decision. You know, if you want to, they got a decision about a truck or something, I, that they just go to Jeff and tell them what they want to do. I, I don't have no, have no objective to that. Well, I've got this thing on the agenda. It's my understanding that 
you know, Commissioner Riddle, you were dealing directly with these guys when they felt like they were responsible to Dana. I think that's primarily what, what got this started. If everybody has a different opinion on how that shop is run, do they have four bosses? Is that how you would envision it? Is it better to have one boss? I don't know. I have nothing to do with that shop, but it seems like an awkward situation to me as an employee if I'm having to answer to four different people, all with four different opinions on the quality, the timeliness of my work, how much time I spend in the office or the computer or in the shop or away from the shop. You know, I would like to be able to deal with one person. That's just me. And I think that uh, I, I agree. And I think the person should be Jeff. And I don't think we should go behind Jeff's back and tell them my or tell somebody else what I think he should be held responsible. By who? By all of us, the accountable. Your election commission. Who's he responsible to? Your manager for the reflection. He's responsible to several different people, four, five, six different people. What's wrong with Jeff being responsible to four different people? It's worked for the last six years, no problem whatsoever. Uh, with it, so why shouldn't he help be held accountable? I don't want to be held accountable for what the shop's doing because that involves all their budgets and involves involves mine, and I should be caring. So I think he should be the person that's held accountable, and I don't think anybody should be a, a any commissioner. One commissioner should be different from any other commissioner. Well, you use the example of the elections administrator. No, they don't answer to five different people. That's not practically how it works. That we would gather together and make decisions, and I ended up being the go-between between, between that person. I believe it worked well that way, but I took input from everybody else. That's right. I think that we should do the same thing. Okay. And then we should do, and we could go to Dana if he wants to be the guy, and if he wants to be it. But I think we should have input. I think we should discuss with each other. I don't think he should be on a day-to-day -day basis telling that mechanic to do this or going to get parts from the mechanic. I'm not going to go get parts from the mechanic. they got 100 people to deliver everything in 30 minutes around here, and every once in a while you may have to go somewhere. Uh, I can understand that, but I think Jeff can go. He needs to go to Longview if we have a problem down there. I went down there. I didn't do much good. I tried to get Dennis to go with me, but it's, uh, they, well, they Jeff can... is still responsible to this court right here. Y'all are still the ones that make hiring and firing decisions, so he's got to have somebody that he reports to. So, well, I'm here to guide this discussion here. If y'all want to continue the way that it is and reiterate that, uh, and I'm not sure how much Dana necessarily wanted this position, but he agreed to take it on, and for the time being, he's got it. If y'all feel the need to continue this discussion, you know, discuss it amongst yourselves. If we need to have a workshop time to discuss this, this doesn't seem to me to be a big, I mean, we're not talking about a responsibility that's going to take hours out of your work. No, are you? Know, you know, if I go down there and I'll just, just five or ten minutes and see what's going on and uh, if they need anything, you know, if he if he can go to Longview, he, that puts him out of not getting that we got a uh, machines in there could be getting out and that's the deal I'd rather him be working on the machines than having to run along you know and because some like I said some parts you can't get this from these parts here you got to have them shipped in or go get them because you know sometimes you know it's I don't know how it's going to be but you know I don't think you'll you'll need more going getting parts because you need that machinery the next day you got to have it yeah. we all help do that too you know a little bit we're all willing to help do whatever right. it takes. Got a good bunch. Yes, sir. When everything's running smooth and everybody's happy, this is a real easy situation. When circumstances come up where one of you four is unhappy with the performance in the shop out of Terry or Jeff, I do think there needs to be one appointed person that's going to deal with that. And, and that one person can certainly take input from the other three of you. That's how I see that this thing ought to work. And if that's your if you've got a different idea, then throw something out here in the form of a motion. But let's let's get some clarification on exactly what we want to come out of this agenda item. As far as I'm concerned, it's working just fine like it is. I'd say let's just leave it like it is. If Dana gets Well, to the it point wasn't working it, fine and we wouldn't have this on the agenda. Well, 
<laughs> it, the the job that's been been done is is, is work okay. so far as far as, from what I can see of it. So if I've got an input with something that they're doing of, of my equipment, I don't bother Dana with it. I go to them. I say, Jeff, I need this done. Uh, what can we do? And he takes care of it. If he's got something, he just he needs somebody that he one person that he can go to. And I, Dana's agreed to take that position. If he gets tired of it, don't want it anymore, or it becomes a burden to him, then he needs to come to us and say, Hey, this is this is what what we need to. Uh, you know, I, I can't handle this anymore, and we need to do something about it then. But as far as I'm concerned, it's worked up to now, and. Okay. Then what is the purpose of having Dana in this capacity? Let's, let's just kind of clarify that. Define what Dana's role is for me. If my feelings on that is if Jeff and them have got something, rather than having to call each and every one of us, if they've got a problem with something or need to know something about something, He's right there close to him. He can, they can contact him. He's in there nearly every day. And I'm not there. I, I may not go there for two weeks uh, unless I've got a piece of equipment up there that I need to go check on or something. Dana's right there close. He's in and out every day right by the shop. All he's got to do, they've got to do is, is say, hey, would you check with Jimmy and see what he needs done on this? And he's been doing it. So... I, what if Jeff, what if Jeff, what if another commissioner has something that he needs to convey to them, something that he's concerned about? I think they need to do just like I said I did. They need to go to, Jeff's got to. Yeah, I'm going to ask you up here in just a second, okay. Jeff, so I don't want to let these guys, but yeah, go ahead and get prepared. Uh, that, they should do just like I said I did. They should go to Jeff and say, Jeff, you know, this is my take on this. If, if you know, I want to spend this much money on this, if it's going to be more than that, then you get back with me and, and we'll go another route. If, you know. Jeff, you, you're the one that's, you know, the, kind of in the hot seat here. Why don't you share with us? Uh, I'm hearing from these guys, but I'm not really, I'm not sure I'm getting anywhere. Uh. And, and this is Jeff Cates, for those of you that don't know. <laughs> and they're, they're parts, I mean, they're right. Uh, I do not go to Dana and work in the shop. I plan all the work in the shop. Dana has no control over that. What I need Dana for is, instead of working for four or five bosses, counting Tim and everything, if, if today all five of you come in and each one of you want something different done, it's mass confusion. It doesn't work well. It's not a good system. We need one person to come in and tell us, you know, this is what the court wants. And then I'll do what the court wants, I, whatever y'all decide. But when Jimmy comes in and Jimmy thinks that I need to be doing something over here and Tim comes in, Tim thinks I need to be working over there, it just, you can't work for five or six different people. It doesn't work well because every time I pull off and make one happy, I make another and upset it. So it doesn't work well, and that's where Dana comes in. Dana comes and tells me what the court wants. He doesn't manage the shop in any way. I still schedule, and when Jimmy or Dana or Al, any of y'all, bring in a piece of equipment, including him, I will call them and find out what's the priority on this. How, how important is this piece of equipment? I'll tell them what I have in the shop and what my workload is and how long it will be before I get to it. And I asked them, you know, at that time I asked even John and everybody, I asked, can this wait until I finish what I'm doing? You know, kind of find out what the priority is. And I try to schedule all the jobs in by priority. And uh, hey Jeff, I have to say, if it hasn't been a problem unless you're doing that, it's been working good. It's been working good, yes. Yeah, it works really so, good. It's work, been working for me too. Been working six years that way, same way. Yep. So, and that's, but just having, the multiple bosses and the multiple input, you need one person to answer to that comes and answers to y'all. You know what I'm saying? I just need one to come in. It, you know, 
That's I, my take on it. Yes, I don't we think effectively have it. that in place right now? I thought we did, yes. <laughs> Until today or what? <laughs> well, no, we've had, no, we've had some <laughs> others that thought they wanted to make different changes. Just need clarification if that's how it's going to be is what I'm looking for. And that's all I need. Uh, the system works good right now the way it is. We just need clarification if that's how it's going to be. Like I said, if the court has something they want me to do different, I'm more than happy to do it. Just either have me come to court, tell me here, or tell Dana, and have Dana come tell me on a day-to-day -day basis. But if one commissioner has something they want you to do different, do you mind dealing directly with them? Oh, no, I don't mind a bit, no. And you can ask all of them. I, I'm, I'm more than open to talk to them. Uh, like I said, that, that's how, if I don't talk to them, I can't get my priorities on what my equipment needs to be fixed first. So I, I need to talk to them. I, I call them on most of them I see daily. I mean, unless everything's running really smooth in their precinct, I don't see them. Okay. Dana does a lot we don't know about because he feels like he's obligated to do it. He don't call us to help him. He just goes and gets it, make sure it gets there and moves a vehicle. Checks on this, whatever. Uh, so I never have to really deal with none of it. And it runs real smooth. And you ask me. So. I still feel like I got as much for, much say so in any decision up there. And you do. If, if I do, it's if I'm going to spend over a thousand dollars more, especially if I'm going to spend over a thousand dollars on any base piece of equipment, I'm calling and going to the equipment with Tim, Jimmy. John, Al, anybody. If I'm going to spend over a thousand dollars on fixing the call to look, you know, this is going to be more expensive than what we thought. Because that's that's coming out of their budget personally. I want to make sure they know that. That's that doesn't go necessarily to Dana or nothing else. I'll call the commissioners. Well, I like the system, and I make a motion we move on and keep it just like it is. I'll second that. Motion is made by Commissioner Fitch to, let's kind of define that a little bit better. We have Dana in an overall uh, supervisory capacity as a representative of the court for uh, guidance over policy decisions in the shop. How about that? That sounds good. You get all that? You can make that motion. You get all that? Yep, got a motion, got a second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right, thank you very much. Item number six, consider and possibly approve the purchase of a backhoe through the by board for precinct three. Yeah, it's, a, it's a caterpillar and it's a, when you buy it by by board, it's like 2%, uh, you get 2% back off the purchase price of it and it's a, uh, it's 94.5, the purchase price of the uh, Caterpillar. And it's got a one-year unlimited hours total machine, and it's got 60 months, uh, 3,500 hour powertrain plus hydraulics and technics. And uh, if it comes, uh, they come along with you. They just you just pay them by the mileage. But but uh, this this uh, well built machine and it's like I said the, the warranty on it it, it, it says it for itself you know price again ninety four thousand five hundred dollars yes plus uh, you get two percent off of that for the Bible for the Bible off the purchase top of the purchase the price, price or at price. the end of the year in the form of a dividend. Well, yes you get that you get two percent from this year at the end of the at year the end of the back year. as a dividend yes. okay is this replacing a piece of equipment or an additional piece of additional equipment? piece because like I said we the machine we got it's still usable we use it at the shop because we just we're just we'll wear it backing up getting off the trailer and everything you can't hear can you <laughs> trains got it but uh like I said, we're going to still use that uh, other machine, but it won't be, believe the other backhoe on the trailer at all times. That way we'd be ready to go if something happened on the weekend or something like that or at night. So, so now you're going to two backhoes yes, uh, and you previously have dealt with, have had only one. We've had two. We got, the other one got sold. And the one is the other one got sold. Yes, That's sir. kind of where I'm getting yes, sir. This is yes, back to a net of two. Right. All right. Because like I said, I was going down to get the bar and owls, but it's like, it's, they, you know, the guys go down there, but you know, it's just, they walk down there and go get them and just, it's just a monotonous to have them, you know, go, you know, they, the next time theirs was down, so we didn't have one. So we didn't have a backhoe to load anything unless we uh, had to come in and bring it in from the job site. Okay. 
All right, so you would like permission to purchase this? Yes, sir. All right, you want to put that in the form of a motion? Yes, sir, I'll make that motion. Uh, Commissioner Applewhite uh, puts forth a motion to allow Precinct 3 to purchase a backhoe, a caterpillar uh, from Holt through the Bible word price $94,500. Second motion. Second by Commissioner Fitch. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? And there are none. All right. First of all, uh, Pam, would you come up to the microphone? I'm going to introduce you. Terry, Jeff, thank you for coming in. All right, I'd like you all to meet Pam Holmes. Pam is our new elections administrator. She just started a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we want to welcome you, Pam. Thank you. We're elated to, uh, to have you here, and we hope that things are starting off for you smoothly over there. For those of you that don't know, Pam is the wife of David Holmes, our uh, chief custodian, and uh, we're just excited to have uh, somebody else that's as fine as, as David is. And Pam's got a couple of folks, I mean, a couple of items here that she would like to discuss with you. And one is item number seven, and that is consider and possibly approve hiring Hart InterCivic for a day of training related to our voting equipment preparation of that equipment and accuracy testing of that equipment. This is going to cost $1,791. Pam, tell us why this is a, uh, an important thing for us. Well, um, as you know, I'm completely new to the office, and um, we've had quite enough people in our office staff, and so we felt that uh, Mr. Rockwell has been very kind in, in uh, helping me get my feet wet in that office. and so. Uh, we felt it would be necessary to have some additional training. First of all, it's a fairly new software product for our office, and um, so I need some training on it. My office staff needs some refresher training on it. And then uh, we would like to invite six poll workers from each party and to um, sit in on that training as well. Where will the training be? In the front room over there in our building. The front room, that being closest to the post office, that big room back there? Yes. Or? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and there will be, I don't know, about 15, 17 of us in that room. And Hart is the company that uh, manufactures <coughs> that new equipment that we bought a couple of years ago. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when will this training be? Uh, once I get it approved, if that's uh, y'all's decision, then I can go ahead and schedule a training, and we should, we should schedule it for the first part of the table first part of April, so roughly a, rough three weeks before early voting yes. uh, begins, okay? Gentlemen, any questions for Pam about this uh, training she's asking for? Would you like to see the proposal? Anybody want to see that? Anything on there we need to know about that you haven't already told us? No, that would, it includes up to one day of service, additional days of service may be purchased separately, equipment prep, logic and accuracy testing support, and poll worker training is what's included in that. The initial cost was $2,060, and they're giving us a special discount. <laughs> so it comes up to $1,791. Okay, so that'll be one full day. Yes. Okay, need a motion if y'all would like to do this. Make a motion. Motion and a mo motion and a second, Commissioner Applewhite, Commissioner Riddle. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Go ahead and get that schedule, Pam. Thank you. All right. Item number eight. Also, Pam's going to tell you about this. Consider and possibly approve the payment of some outstanding invoices to a company called Elections Administrators, or or EA as they are referred to. Uh, in the amount of $15,620. So tell us about this. I would like for you to take a look at this. These are How much 
Leonard, is this a company you had done business with uh, when you were there? This is not a new company related to that heart equipment, right? No, sir. That's, uh, that's the uh, software and support for that uh, poll book that we use to look up the voters when we have an election, the voter registration room, and they charge that for the, uh, for the software uh, license and for the uh, support if we need any help on it. And that annual amount is about what you you were used to paying at the at that time when you were in office. I think it may be a little increase because they said it updated it since since 2015, okay. and it may be a little less than what they updated. Okay. Well, there here are three invoices of four thousand eight hundred forty dollars each. The first one is dated October of sixteen. The next one, October of 17, and the last one, October of 18. Judge, did, did y'all check with Shelby at my office to make sure they had not been paid? We did uh, check with the auditor. Well, I don't know that I asked her that question specifically. I just wanted to make sure that this was a business that we were used to doing business with, and apparently they are. So, again, based on what I know at this point, when our previous election administrator took office, these bills didn't get Never taken done. care of. And we don't know why that is. Leonard doesn't seem to know why. Pam certainly doesn't know why. I don't know why. So I'm hoping you're going to see a history of payment of this on an annual basis, and then it goes away for three years. But And why this company would continue to have such a, an easy collections policy with us, I don't know. To keep doing business with us year after year seems strange to me, but nonetheless, I guess they've got plenty of money. Pam, where were the invoices sent to? Did they tell you where they were they sent here or were they to the auditor's office or were they sent over there? The, the address that I verified with Mr. Nolan was once in South Madison. Yeah, they would send it to them. But I still, I'll have Shelby check just to make sure it was the last time we paid one of these. It's, it's, we should be able to look and at And I would think this would be something we would budget for, although after a while you keep seeing that much uh, money, just, just, less just, money yeah, spent. But it's not a, it, it wouldn't be a separate item, it'd just be an election expense. Yeah. So. But either way, this is more than likely an unbudgeted item for, for this year, or can we afford this much, this much all at one time? Oh, we can pay it. We may have to move some money around. Well, I know we can pay it, but do we have enough in that budget is the question. I'm assuming there's not enough in here to absorb this all in one year. It, historically, it wouldn't be, no. Because we just try to put in what, what we thought we needed based on the year before. So. Well, again, I, I don't know what else 
Pam can do here. If you'll check with uh, Shelby sure and, and be sure we we see these this amount yeah. stop back in 2015 and right. nothing since that time. And this company is now, are they going under a different name now? Is that correct? Um, his signature on it is No Ink. K-N-O-W-I-N-K. Yes. And uh, there was a, a name change somewhere in there because we had, we had quite a time trying to find where we were going to get our information from. Okay. Okay. All right. So... Pam is asking you for approval to get these bills paid, get us current with the company whose services that we need in order to continue. I make, make a motion, motion we approve it. Well, uh, uh, after Carl uh, has Shelby check and make sure they are see when the last time was that yeah, yeah, we they, were, they were paid. Yeah, and if you find anything that we need to know about, you know, let, let me know. But otherwise, I have a motion by Commissioner Parker, second by second. Commissioner Fitch, to uh, get these four outstanding invoices paid to uh, EA or to No Inc., whoever they're doing business as right now. Invoices. I do. This right here is the invoices if you want to take up. Okay. Have you already? Okay. Well, I'll have a time by the way. Okay. Yeah, that's what I need. Okay, Pam. Anything else? <coughs> All right, Leonard, while you're here, uh, just for your we information. We didn't vote on that. Oh, we didn't vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. I always fail to do that. Uh, this, this will be Leonard's uh, final week that uh, we approved for him to work. And Leonard, I just want to say how much we appreciated you helping us make this transition, going from a time when we uh, did not have an administrator and you hooked us up here and and got us through, and Pam, is, I know, has appreciated you being there. And so thank you, thank you for your service. Ms. Holmes is uh, a good person for the job. I think it was selection on selecting her. She's a fast learner, and uh, she uh, coming along real well. And we, I think this, uh, this week, I think, uh, with additional training for the machines, I think she'll be, think she'll be ready. I think she'll do well. And uh, like she said, the reason for this training is because nobody in my office has any of the two people that really knew how to set the machines up and test them and then they're gone. So nobody's had any experience. I know the procedure that you know that you have to do, but I'm not familiar with the machines, so I think this is a good idea to bring uh, the company in to train us on those things. Two things I will mention while I'm here is that uh, we got a uh, I was that acting as election administrator, we got a notice from the Secretary of State that they're mailing a special election in August. Uh, Senate bill, Senate bill two, I think it was passed, dealing with the uh, Adler property taxes, put a cap on it, that that will have to be a countywide election. And they indicated that, uh, of course, they, this is not in their budget, it's not in our budget. They want to, uh, us to give them an estimate as to what it's going to cost to do this election and uh, talk to Pam about it. We're going to submit the, what it costs to do the uh, Constitution in the election on the odd years. <coughs> they indicated that they, uh, kind of may, they may not reimburse us if we uh, submit that cost. They may not reimburse us the full cost because what they're suggesting is that uh, just open one box in each commission's precinct. That's kind of what they want. What they want to pay for. They want to pay for uh, the workers for four boxes. But uh, you know, I don't know how y'all feel about it. But the election, you know, dealing with the property taxes and all that may, uh, you know, people may be kind of don't have opportunity to vote. You know, they don't, there's a special election in August. Nobody's really focusing on the election. And if it's just only in isolated places, it may. Uh, a lot of people may not get a chance to uh, participate. So I know that this is an unexpected expense here and maybe be some extra expense on the uh, August election if you choose, you know, to open additional boxes other than the four commission's precinct. But they will be uh, willing to reimburse the county for uh, if you just have four boxes open for that general election in, uh, in August for the uh, and uh, the other thing that uh, the court may consider doing is that when we got these machines that uh, we were previously using and purchasing in 2006, 
federal government paid for those machines. So when we had elections for the city, the county, the hospital, and whatnot, there was a cap put on how much we could charge per machine when we do elections for other entities. Now, the county purchased this equipment, so you may want to revisit that and think about uh, what you can, uh, what you uh, price you want to charge uh, for the equipment when we do other elections for other entities. And that's the way you recoup some of that money for the licenses and stuff on that they charge on, like the phone books. You know, that's a piece of equipment that you have to have for the elections. So you may want to, uh, you know, think about since this equipment was purchased, you know, by the county and not by the federal government that you can, you know, you can charge, you know, reasonable price. You know, no government can put, put a cap on it and you can recoup some of the money like that. But anyway, just wanted to Good idea. share that while I was here. Good idea. All right. Thank you again. We appreciate Thank you it. so much, Leonard. <laughs> Thank you, Leonard. Appreciate it. Thank you, Pam. Don't dig up any more bills, please. <laughs> it's cleaning the house. Um, all right, item number nine. Let me see if I've got any email here. I've been waiting on an email this morning from uh, UMR. Let's see here. All right. This is from Chris Kaplinger with UMR related to item number nine. Consider and possibly approve a change to our county health insurance plan regarding balance billing. This was something that she brought up the last workshop that we had that has to do with these uh, providers that are outside of our network that submit. And we're not going to vote on this where I'm going with this because she's asked that we table this so that she can give us uh, either be here in person or provide us with additional information. But it has to do with when providers submit bills to our uh, to our county employees after we're all under the assumption that uh, the work has been done and paid for. Uh, through our insurance plan and they end up submitting these additional bills and we're going to talk about ways we're going to avoid having to deal with that situation. So I would ask for you to uh, someone give me a motion to table this item and we can discuss it uh, probably at our next meeting. Make a motion to table. Motions made by uh, Commissioner Fitch to table item number nine. Second. Second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor say aye. aye. Item number 10, uh, this is a regular annual item that we do. This is where we consider and possibly approve a resolution uh, to apply for 2019 Homeland Security Funds. I'll briefly read this to you. Whereas the court finds it in the best interest of the citizens that the interoperable communications project be conducted in 2019 and the court agrees to provide applicable matching funds for the said project as required by the 2019 Homeland Security grant application and the commissioner's court agrees that in, in the event of loss or misuse of the office of governor funds that the court assures that the funds will be returned and that the commissioner's court designates the county judge as the grantee's authorized official. This official is given the power to apply for, reject, alter, or terminate the grant on behalf of the applicant. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the county commissioner's court approves submission of the grant application for the interoperable communications project to the office of the governor. As you'll recall, in years past, this is actually something that's coordinated by Chief McRae for, uh, for radios uh, that they're always in need of that serve the uh, fire department. And this has to flow through the county, but the city agrees to basically be the one that administers this, but they need our help in the application process. So this is not a new way of doing this. We did the exact same thing. Uh, two years ago on February 13th of 2017. How much is that grant for? Right? Uh, at this point, I don't know what that amount it's usually, is. It's usually three or four thousand dollars. I was thinking it was more than that, but it may not be more than that. <clears throat> it's not going to buy a bunch of radios, but every little bit helps. So we just need to submit this resolution if uh, you all are in agreement. Again, it uh, will be administered through the through Chief McRae. 
Make a motion we approve the resolution. Motion's made by Commissioner Parker. Second, second, Commissioner Fitch. All in favor say aye. Aye. This does require your signature on there, so if I can pass that down there to you. Item number 11, consider and possibly approve the reappointment of Francis Neal to the Lakes Regional Mental Health Mental Retardation Board of Trustees for another two-year term. Francis Neal has served on the board there for Lakes Regional for as long as I've been in office. She's uh, willing to continue to do this. We need to make this official and approve her for another two-year term. And if you see her, tell her thank you for her continued service. Make a motion. Motion is made by Commissioner Fitch to approve the reappointment of Miss Neal to the MHMR Lakes Regional Board. Second. Second, Commissioner Applewhite. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. And that's unanimous. All right, we've got another one of our uh, pieces of property that we've uh, gotten uh, a bid for. This is a piece of property that had been previously struck off the tax roll, was not able to be sold uh, at auction during the tax sales, and Tim Taylor has brought us this. A uh, bid for the purchase of the above reference tract of land, which is Lot 9, Block 196, formerly in the name of Aaron Maben. Uh, again, a bid for the purchase of this tract, which was previously struck off at an April 2017 uh, auction. But a bid has been received in the amount of $3,000. The sales price for the above lot is less than the warrant amount of $40,737 and the appraisal value of $39,955. Now let me give you a little more explanation on this, why we're just getting $3,000. The property is now a vacant lot. 311 South Lyde in Mount Pleasant. The tax appraisal of 39,000 included the value of a $30,000 house, which was on the lot. The house was not habitable, and it has now been removed by the city. I enclose documentation for your consideration. So again, the uh, they were trying to get around $40,000 back at that time in 2017 for the lot and the uninhabitable house. The house is now gone. We're left with a vacant lot. We've gotten a bid, $3,000 on the lot only. And Mr. Is Tyler. Aaron Maven part of the Maven real estate company? No. No, there's no, there's no Aaron Mabins in that family. What's your pleasure? You can, uh, th this is Tim's recommendation and he needs other support from other uh, taxing entities, specifically the city. And I believe the city has, you know, wants this sold as well. Hopefully another house will get built on this property and get it back up even beyond what it was previously valued for. Like motion. Motion by Commissioner Riddle to approve the sale of this property for $3,000. Uh, Second motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. And again, that Mr. Maven was not the one, uh, he was not the one making the bid. He was the one that was the previous owner of the property. All right, I'll get that signed and return to Mr. Taylor. Item number 13, consider and possibly approve hiring a document shredding company to pick up and destroy old county documents. Uh, we got a call from JP uh, Two's office saying that they were going to go ahead and, and hire a company out of, where were they, out of Longview, Carolyn, uh, and bring them up. And we said, hold on, why don't we offer this service to everyone in the county? And share this cost and, and make a you know a good showing when this company comes to shred these documents. So we're announcing to uh, everyone, and Carolyn will send out some emails letting everyone know 
of an upcoming date when we will bring this document shredder up. So anything that you've got that you need to have shredded, uh, as opposed to just simply throwing away, um, keep this in mind. And Carolyn will let you all know the date that we all agree on. So start collecting up your your documents that uh, need the shredder on a large scale. So if you will allow us to do that, I need a motion so that we can go ahead and hire a company, likely one we've dealt with in the past, that has been quite affordable, uh, and we really got a lot of stuff uh, thrown away properly. Make a motion. Motion's made by Commissioner Applewhite. Second. Second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor of approval, say aye. Aye. All right, item number 14, consider and possibly approve elected officials. This is not necessary. This was a carryover, thinking that perhaps we still needed this, but we do not need this item. So this is a non, uh, a non action item that we did not even need on the agenda, actually. Item number 15, here's going to be some discussion involved with this, and I'm going to propose a five minute break on this one. I've got to make one quick <coughs> telephone call. If anybody else uh, needs to make a phone call, restroom or whatever, let's please gather back. Let's, let's make it about four minutes here. Okay, it's 1023 and we're back. And we are ready for item number 15. Discuss holiday pay in the Sheriff's Department with possible action to follow. Uh, Sheriff, I'm going to let you kind of give us a background and uh, tell us what the issue that we need to consider and okay. what action you're asking us for. Well, this uh, this has been a, an issue since I, before I was even sheriff, so it's been a, been a long time coming. So it's something probably not, not this one. So this is a, a problem that uh, that I've been asked to address, uh, and I think I've come up with a, with a solution uh, that's going to be uh, good for everybody. Um, what basically what happened is 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 pretty much everybody in the county except for my jailers, uh, and and then if they leave, even my even my patrol deputies get get the holiday pay or time, uh, except it, that hadn't been happening with our guys. So. To make it fair of what we've done, one kind, thing I'm Kind I, of break I, down what this means. I mean, let's make it real easy to understand. Okay, it's, it's holiday pay, like, like just like on President's Day. If the county's off, then most employees are off and they get paid for being off. But my guys in, in can't. In fact, be off. all are off except for your guys. Right, right? We're, we're forced to work. We, we can't shut down. We've, we've got to be there. And so what happens is, is when, they, when they depart from us, or usually uh, if they you know, whatever way it happens, uh, they don't get paid. What they is our current out. policy? Current policy? Well, uh, I guess that we just didn't pay holiday time if they didn't get to take it off, I guess, the way it's been. Well, our current policy is, as I understand it, is it's basically treated like comp time. Well, they're supposed to get paid, but it's supposed to be used like, what, like Carl, 180 days or something yes. like that? Yes, it, 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 which you're supposed to be treated like comp time. The comp time is from working overtime. If you work overtime, then we comp you right. time and a half. Holiday pay, we were, treated, we were keeping it separate because it's not required by the Fed, so it's a different deal than overtime pay, but we were tracking it separately. And our policy says that they're supposed to be given that time off within 180 days. The problem is in the Sheriff's Department and the jail particularly, they're always shorthanded and they, and they weren't able to give them the time off. So I've had some problems where when people left, they, they had holiday pay that was owed to them that they uh, weren't allowed to take the time off and, and we didn't pay them because we didn't, we didn't have it. That's not the way our policy said. We weren't going to pay it. They either you, they got they either got the time off or they didn't get anything. So we, we need to address the policy it for, for other employees. Let's course. say that a commissioner's department or department had to work on a holiday due, due to an emergency. Right. And they would be given comp time as well, but they would have to use that within 30 days. 30 days. And we gave the sheriff's department 180 days because they were shorthanded. That was, that was the reason for letting them, giving them a longer time to do it. So and plus in the jail. You know, we're mandated in the jail where we have to have so many uh, jailers compared to the inmate number. So, you know, we've got to have that number in there. 
Uh, and I don't know if you guys remember, but probably about, uh, Commissioner Pitch wasn't here, but uh, I guess maybe four or five years ago, I cut two positions in the jail when Looney started cutting to try to help out with the budget. So that even made it harder. So uh, there's just not a lot of room because you're in the jail you're, when, we're, when you're required to have so many jailers. Well, if you let one officer try to take all of them pay, then you got to call somebody else and something happens to And it's just like Rod and Peter to pay Paul. It's just not working. So <clears throat> what I've done is uh, come up with a solution where I believe we can pay the jail. Uh, I don't think we need to pay everybody because of my patrol guys. I still think we can, more especially since we cut it now, we've been paying the 12 hours. And actually, we probably should have only been paying eight hours. Well, we haven't been paying anything on it, but they've been, that's what they've been given. So what we've done is, is start President's Day, we've moved back to where even my guys are on 12 hours and we get eight hours of holiday pay. And then the other four hours is working straight. So, uh, so well, that's, let me that's, ask you, before you get to that, somebody that that works on a regular basis, works these holidays, and they're given this comp time, and it builds up, and they have 180 days to burn that time, you're saying that it's not uncommon or it is very common for them to be told, I'm sorry, I can't give you that time off, I'm too short-handed, right. is that the situation? Yes. And what happens when they uh, when they leave, either voluntarily or involuntarily, to that time? Don't you think? So this, uh, what I've come up with is uh, I, I believe that we can, more specifically since we've cut it by a third, uh, what we're giving them, uh, I, I believe that we can manage the control side good and keep it down. Uh, but what, what it is, is is we can pay for this, and, and I don't have to ask for any new money at all. What we can do is we can just take money that's already in the budget, and my budget that I don't spend, use that to pay for this, and the problem's solved. We're, we're done with it. And so what I'd like to do is uh, take, uh, take uh, pay the jail as we go, because that's where the biggest problem is. <clears throat> and go ahead, when holiday hits, just pay them. Patrol side, we can still keep that down low. More fairly simply, cut what they're getting. We can, we can keep that down, so I don't believe that's going to be an issue. But with the jail, I say we pay them, and I can use money uh, that I've already got in my budget, and I have to ask you guys for any new money. And we can, uh, and what we'll use, and the fund that'll come from is actually the pay, what we pay the pay amount of our, our payroll. Because <clears throat> it takes so long when someone quits or leaves us, they, it takes so long to uh, hire someone that, like this year, I'll probably give you back over easy $100,000 just on payroll. So what this will cost in the, in the jail, normal, would be about $28,500 a year is all. But uh, what I want to do is I'm going to remove the jail deputy pay, knock it down to regular jailer pay. Uh, that'll save us about 407 an hour. I do need to use $2 that an hour to pay people that train in the jail because there's so much going on with that. Uh, and that still will leave us about 4300 a year to add back on the 28, which will knock it down to about 24000 is all it's going to cost us. But I can pay for that out of money people that they leave it takes so long to hire can actually pay for that within my budget. So I'm not asking for any new money at all. I'm just asking to let's just start paying the jail. That's where the biggest problem is. Let's just start paying them guys as we go. Do away with that problem on the patrol side when they do leave. It won't be much. We can just pay them for their holiday time. And it usually takes two to three months to get someone hired so we can more than pay for that out of the time left. So I'm not asking for any new money at all, but I have been asked to come up with a solution. Uh, that's my solution. And we don't have to have to take care of your new money. We use money starting my budget that I'm not using to pay for that. So I'm not asking for the money. So you're, you're saying this would apply to only jail staff, not patrol. Patrol right. you're going to continue to give them comp time and give them 180 days to use that time? Yeah, and, they're, and it's never going to be zero because of our holidays. And you give 180 days, it's always they're always going to have a little. But we can keep them under 40. Uh, easy so that if they leave and a lot of times if they leave and give me a two-week notice we can actually let them off on that and have that paid for before they even go the pro side is not going to really be a problem though the main issue and that's why i wanted to pay the jail the jails the, the main issue that's where the problem is that, that we're you they can't i mean we just can't let them off because we don't have enough people from and, and we're mandated to keep a certain amount of people in there and, and uh, so to be fair to them guys, I think we're just paying as we go and we're done with it, problem solved. And I can, uh, but like I say, doing away with that position, I'm 
paying for some of that already, uh, uh, about over four thousand dollars. So it's going to knock it down to where it's only about uh, yeah, twenty four hundred off of twenty four thousand dollars a year. Like we do the other two from the position that, that I've cut down to a jailer, so I can pay for my uh, training pay and then still give you some money back to add to this. So. So on a holiday, somebody that's scheduled to work on a holiday, they'll receive their regular pay, in the which, is a, which is a 12-hour shift, right? Right. The holiday pay, because all other employees are off an eight-hour day, you're proposing paying them on their paycheck for an additional eight hours. Just so eight hours. 12 right, hours 12. for that day plus eight. And that's not at double time or at time and a half, that's, that's just, just straight time. Straight time, eight hours, straight time, pay, and then that's fair, that's what everybody else gets. So, so they would not accumulate anything in their holiday no, pay sir. bank? None. We'd do away with holiday pay back in the jail. It'll be done. But does the sh the patrol side will still be accruing holiday pay. He's going to try to work that off. The patrol but side, they, yes. But if they don't get it worked off, and they leave, we will be paying them whatever they're owed. You, you that, that's it, also, you a, that's that also a change in policy. That's right. Well, you have to do it that way if you're going to pay the other ones. You'd well, have to do but that. I, I, that's what I want these guys to understand. Mean, there's yeah. two facets to this. One is going forward, there's going to be pay eight hours to guys in the jail working a holiday, but based on this list you've given us here, we're taking on some immediate liability to pay these guys when they leave. When they leave, but yeah, but we're going to start immediately trying to work on that now that we're not accruing any, we cut it down to eight. That's going to help us a lot. But yeah, we're going to, we're going to start working on that and try to have all that done within our Okay. Thank you for explaining that. Guys, questions about this? Do you understand what we're doing here? We did contact some other counties. What were your findings? Then? Greg County pays as they when they leave. They don't pay as they go. But if they quit, no matter how they leave, they write a check when they leave. Uh, I think Kemp County pays as they go. Kemp County pays. Kemp County pays yeah. as they go. I talked yeah, to Yeah, so it's, it's just you know that's what I'm finding with with you know and like most cities just pay it as they go too. But now the county is uh, the only two that we looked at was Greg. And because uh, they're larger now, we look at the smaller one, uh, and they they all pay. But one pays when they leave, one pays if they go, so they don't have to pay when they leave. So, uh, but now remember the patrol side. I really feel that that's more especially since we cut what they're getting. It's going to be manageable. That's not going to be a big issue. And there again, it takes so long to hire somebody in those positions. Those will be paid for two other payrolls. So. Won't be asking for any new money. I don't believe that of that either. I think it's going to be self sufficient. So. There's two other points there. One, when he's talking about we cut, when Sharon was originally doing it, they were working 12 hour days, so she was giving them 12 hours credit. And we checked with the other counties, no, no other county was doing that. It's not a requirement of the federal government to do that because the federal government doesn't recognize holidays anyway. Right. Uh, so, we're going to go back and change them off to eight hours a day, and that's what these new adjusted numbers are. These are adjusted these down, are adjusted down, down. These down. Except those about third. Yeah, it right. was a lot higher than that. We could have gone And then the second thing to keep in mind is what the sheriff says right. He's got money in his budget because he never spends all the money in his budget. But it's still going to cost you money because we're going to be paying twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars a year that we weren't paying before. It's. It, it, it'll be inside the budget, but it was money we weren't paying before that we're paying now. So it is there is no, there is a cost to it. It's just inside the budget. It, it fits in the budget, but it's additional. Right. Money. I'm just using instead of giving instead you, of carrying over a hundred thousand dollars, you're gonna carry over seventy thousand dollars. Right. So you don't spend it. Yeah. Well, sir. I assume that some of these people probably quit because they know they got this big check. Well, they weren't getting a check. No, I mean, when they leave now, when they leave now, pay them this, these holidays, huh? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's possible, but they're going to have to have a job somewhere. So, but I mean, yeah, it's possible they go find a job yeah. somewhere else and leave. They, get, like, they have to pay a fine or something like that. <laughs> Need that money. I'm, I'm just thinking. Yeah. But we can, But that's my solution. We can use money that I'm not spending. Like you said, it will cost, but it's not going to be new money. I'm not asking for money above my budget. I'm just asking to be able to use the money that y'all give me in my budget 
I can pay for this and not have to ask you for any money above that. We can, we can pay for it and not, and not ask for new money. So this is, I am asking that I can pay for it out of the money that I don't spend in the budget. So, and we'll still get money back. I mean, this is still not going to heat up. But now, another issue here is this was brought to my attention by a, a jailer that left. And we owed him 100, I think it was 128 hours that he had worked that he didn't get paid for when he left. Uh, and that's been since January 1st. I don't know how to set this, what date we want to use to set this up as. I feel like that gentleman needs to be paid since he's the one that brought it to our attention. I don't know if there's another one that's left since January 1st. I don't know what date you want to use. I don't know what date makes the most sense to you. I think you might hear from him. Yes, I probably will. Real quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might be here with us. Oh, is he? Okay. I haven't ever met him. I just talked to him on the phone. All right. Anything else, Sheriff? No, sir. Just don't forget I do meet the training pay. I'll take that out of the position I reduced some pants of that out of and still give me some back. I don't need all of it. I do, I do need some. Need two dollars an hour out of that four hundred seven to save. So I'm giving two hundred seven of even above that what they budget back. All right, I've got another gentleman here that would like to address the court. He's waited patiently and asked to speak. Come on up. Hello. Uh, my name is David Ray. I worked at the jail for uh, about fourteen months. During that time, I accumulated 138 hours of holiday pay. I was told that, well, we don't pay for holiday pay. And to me, uh, if I work a holiday, you're paying somebody who's not working a holiday that you're not willing to pay me because I'm here, and you're saying, well, you can't pay me. Well, that's not really an appropriate answer to me. And, and this is my feeling on this. Uh, when I hired on them, they said, you get holiday pay. And now that I've left, now they want to take 138 hours and go, we're not going to pay you for that. Now, I don't see that as right. I think that's a couple of thousand dollars. The lady down here, no, I talked to a lady down here, and she said, David, they only have 180 days to pay you for holiday pay or to make you pay you. Well, we don't. Like Sheriff Ingram said, and I believe he's doing the best job he can with what he has because the jail has to be manned 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And a lot of people don't realize that the jail, that you get called in on your days off uh, all the time because you have inmates that have to go to the hospital, inmates have to be transported. Uh, there is so much that goes on there that you don't understand. So even on your days off, you are not off. You are on call. Uh, you have some jailers that won't come to work, they won't answer their phone, you have some that do. Uh, and that's fine. I've always done that. And I just feel like that the 138 hours I accumulated, I know I've been accumulated in the last 180 days. When you ask for a day off, it's always the same answer. Oh, we got one person off. Well, if you can only afford to let one person off in the jail, how do you expect them to use the comp time and the holiday time? I mean, I had so much comp time that they had to pay me for my comp time down to 80 hours. I had 160 or 70 hours for comp time. That's how much they, they work down there. Which, I'm okay, I was okay with that. But I just don't think that it's right that you take my holiday pay and just go, we're not gonna pay. Uh, I just, I can't see that. Anyway, I don't know, you know, this is about doing what's right. Uh, anyway, that's really all I have on it. I'd like to be paid for the holiday time. It's 138 hours. I think it's 1904 dollars something like that. When was your last day, David? Uh, February 5th, I believe. Yeah. 5th. Yeah. February 5th, I believe. Uh, I'd just like to be paid for my time on that. Uh, I just don't see how you can pay your other employees because they're allowed to be off. I mean, they're not 365, 24 7. They don't have to do that. So you can let them off. Your jailers, 
Just my opinion, I know a bunch of them that work down there, they're not happy about it. They know that everybody else gets fat. And they, and they don't like it. One thing that you have to do is you have to keep people at the jail and you treat them if they're treated less than the other employees that work for the same county. It makes it difficult. You have quite a turnover down there. Uh, I believe that is true. But uh, anyway, that's really all I have to say. I just would like to be, you know, uh, I'd like to see the y'all do the right thing, pay us for this time. I accumulated this. Um, also, they would make, you know, sometimes when it was slower, they would say, well, we need you to take a contact. They never came to you and said, we need you to take a holiday. We need you to take a contact because they, in, in effect, you know, your boss and your media boss, you know, they have to pay you for that contact. No one really have to pay you for a time, as it is written now. Now, Mr. Johnson here says, well, it's all the same thing. I said, no, sir, it's not. He thought that it was just her time, but it is not. No, it's kept separate. So, you know, and this okay. is, you know, kind of young, that means no one's going on as far as. I just think we should be paid for that. I believe I should be paid for the time of 38 hours that I work. Um, and that's really all. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. Well, these are policies that were put into place by the commissioner's court. We, we had some revisions in these when we were working through our uh, policy manual a few years back. And, and I remember this subject being discussed. I remember Sheriff Ingram saying, well, it would be tough to give these guys time off. And so that situation has not changed. If anything, it's probably gotten worse. So we've had the situation presented. It's up to you guys to decide what you would like to do. Well, I agree with Mr. Ray. I think you should be paid for it. Okay. What about the rest of the presentation, Sheriff? Are you okay with his suggestion? That, uh, oh, Tim's suggestion? Yes, to do it? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, we to make a motion that we start this new policy Tim recommended effective February 1st. Do the right thing for our people who work so hard. As of February 1st, we would like to include the gentleman who was raised. He didn't leave till the 5th, so he would be included. Okay. But I understand they'll, those hours they accumulated to you were at 12, but they will not be able to pay you at 8. Eight hours a day. Well, but I think I, I, I mean, well, let's, um, then we need to make a motion to pay Mr. Ray at the 12 hour that he was working for before he resigned. So yeah, let, let's think about this here first In, of all. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, <laughs> no, I, I think that. Uh, I think it's hard to pay Mr. Ray, and I think it's hard to be paid at the, at the eight hours when we knock everybody else down to make it fair. I mean, he's wanting fair. I agree it is. He should be paid, but a fair is fair. I knocked everybody else off before that. Everybody else cut a third off, which is not that many hours, really. Uh, but uh, he'll still have a pretty good check coming. But I uh, see what you're saying. Well, you yeah, because yeah, federal law is only recognizing it, and I think it's good that you guys are paying it. So, uh, uh, I think it needs to be, he needs to be paid the rate minus one third. Like so again, all these hours have been reduced down by a third okay. of the hours that you're looking at here. So for example, somebody with 40 uh, hours, they thought they had 60 hours in their bank because we had been uh, accruing, 12. accruing 12 hours on these holidays rather than the uh, rather than the straight hours of eight like all other employees. And that's also the way when we check the other counties were doing. I believe I don't know there's anybody in the county that wasn't paying just eight hours. They no, everybody had all camp. Well, let me ask. Let me ask you this. Now, now remember, he's still paid. He got his straight. He got his regular pay for 12 hours. 
when we were there working on that day. We're just trying to come up with a way to equalize the holiday. Now, what about a situation where Mission Extension crew had to work uh, 12 12-hour day on President's Day? Our current policy is right now, what, that they would find 12 hours? Of it. Now, up until we made this most recent adjustment, Sharon would have given those guys 12 hours of holiday. That's right. That's right. And they would have had Thursday to make that, to, to take that time. No. But they would but they wouldn't have gotten paid twelve hours regular pay, I don't believe, but they would have just worked the same forty hours for the week. Yeah. I mean they were twelve hour shifts, but they're still just working forty hours. I mean no, they're not working any overtime than that, at least unless they were asked to all work an extra shift. They had an emergency situation, clearing trees or whatever, ice storm, and they worked a twelve hour president's day. How would they be compensated? They're supposed to take 12 hours off sometime in the next 30 days. They wouldn't get their holiday pay? No. Well, they get their holiday pay. They, they would get off. their holiday pay all the time. Yeah, right. Right. That's right. Yes, Dave. So one thing about that is, with the eight hours. Can I get you to come up to the mic so we okay. can have this on there? Yes, sir. One thing about that is their crew works eight hours a day. I mean, it's the regular day at the Tyler County Jail is 12 hours. It's 12 hours every day. I mean, you know, so I'm not telling y'all what to do, but that's what it is. You know, y'all work eight hours, y'all are like, well, you got a ton of that time. Well, they can not be made 12 hours. I'm going to say that you're going to get these 12 hours of time. It's like when you work every day at 12 hours, and you can just help somebody where your holiday is 8 hours. And I'm just hoping to do that. I mean, I work for the U.S. field, and maybe that's from the day. You work 12 hours a day, and you got to get out of the time. Uh, but you should just know the difference. There is a difference in the way the commissioner's crew work and the way the Tyler County Jail works. You know, but that's a 12 hour day every day. You don't get time and a half, you don't get overtime. You're scheduled in your two week pay period, the most pay period, sometimes when they have enough people, which is rarely because you have over 100 people in the jail most of the time. You have to have four officers, but when you need, you have to have three, but you need four. You really need five because there's so much going on in the jail. Uh, also, so at 12 hours, you're working somebody their regular <laughs> schedule. So you're paying them eight hours holiday, that's their regular schedule. But the jail, their regular work day is 12 hours. You know, so that's something else to think about also. Right, but their regular work week is still 40 or <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just like what you're talking about, U.S. Steel, they paid you eight because you might work 12 hours a day, but you still work 40 hours a week. Well, no, sir. Or, or 80 hours over two weeks. Well, you work 84 most of the time. Okay. Well, then you would get, well, then you would get four hours more. A comp time. Yeah. A comp time. Yeah. And so, you know, that's just compare apples to apples. But you got paid the 12 hours plus the eight hours you're going to get for a holiday day. I have to got Right, but under this plan you would. Yeah. But I understand what you're saying, but the eight hours holiday, I'm okay with that. But, you know, y'all are trying to say that the commissioner's workers, y'all don't work holiday. I mean, you're off. You know, so that's, you're off. Your workers are off on the holiday, so if they're called out due to an emergency, well, that's rare. They still get the holiday pay, and they get paid for the hours that they want to, if we call them out. Okay, right? sir. I understand that. I, I think we recognize okay. that, in, that inequality. I think part of it is the nature of the job. You know, do I, I want to work that, at this type of job, or do I want to? But one well taken. Okay. Here. Well, we don't have to work 12 hours. I can put these guys back on eight hours. <laughs> It's the 12 hours helps helps us. It is better for us down there. And the thing is, I, I went to a vote on that when we started doing it several years ago. 
And that's what helps me keep healthy. They love the 12 hours. They don't want to leave. We don't have to work. So therefore, that's why federal law puts it at eight hours. So I think he needs to get paid the eight hours. And mine is just like everybody else did. He got paid his other four hours, and if he worked eight four hours, then the other is the uh, uh, cop time, or you know. So he's not out any money. Uh, I think though that the holiday time, so he still paid for the eight, that four hours. But I think we need to pay the eight hours, like federal law. If we do pay, like that's all we got to pay. Uh, it's a choice that they wanted to go on those twelve hours. We can work eight hours. So that's that twelve hours is not an issue. Uh, in fact, it's it's a good thing because they the, the people want because it gives them even though they work more at one time, it gives them more time off with their families. And, and, and working the twelve hours, you get two weekends off a month. You one one weekend you work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday twelve hours. The next weekend you're off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So so I agree, Mr. Ray, and, and everybody else needs their money. Uh, I certainly don't have a problem with that. I think it's only fair. But I still think we pulled from everybody else. It needs to be paid at eight hours, just like everybody else, like better losses we have to pay if we pay it. So, uh, I mean, I, yeah, the 12 hour deal, though, you got to work eight, but you could work 12. And if you did, I think you don't need, need to get eight hours. If you work for a holiday, you know, only eight hours, eight hours that need to be holiday paid. Uh, like everybody else, like the law says. So, I think we need to stick with it and pay deduct a third off of it and pay him his eight-hour holiday that we owe him, that he did approve, and, and be done with it. Uh, I've got a motion by Commissioner Fish, and as I recall, that motion is to implement effective immediately or effective February 1. <coughs> February 1. Effective February 1, we implement the But we need to change it to do you this new policy. Of paying, the, uh, paying for eight hours on yeah. holidays and paying uh, crude holiday pay uh, to anyone that uh, departs the one. department after February or beginning First. February 1, 2000. With the eight hour, you know, that new policy. Eight hour. Okay. Yes. Is that right? Then my training spot, my four training spot, I need that in there. You're going to do that that $2 extra training for trainers? Yes, that's this okay. policy you want. Well, let's, let's, so that we can get all this policy documented in there. The policy, as I understand it, is that holiday pay for jail staff will be paid on their paycheck eight hours per day per holiday. Now, how does this bit about the training pay effect this well, policy. This is, this is separate from that. This is, uh, this is my own payment from that position I've been away with. Well, how, how you fund it is your business. All we're going to say is how, what's, it's what's just, paid. It's just, uh, we, we do a lot of training in the jail, and we have certain ones that we use to train to pay them more for their extra work that they do. Is what they do. I mean, four position, 50 cents an hour on that. So okay. that doesn't have anything to do with the policy. Yeah, That's right. Policy. And, That's and this policy is going to say, you pay this holiday pay when they're terminated or when they resign their job from now on, That's which right. we didn't do. So right. we'll be good. Okay. Then we're going to pay as, pay as we go in the jail. Okay. Joyce, have you got all that? <laughs> well, let's let's be sure because it, there's a lot here to it. Tim's pretty the sure. Mo the that. motion is effective February 1, 2019, when. Uh, Sheriff's Department employees leave, they will be paid for their holiday pay. Unused holiday pay. Unused holiday pay. And jail staff, effective under the same date, will be paid at eight hours per holiday on their paycheck. Anyone that has left February 1, 2019 or later will be paid for their accrued, unused holiday pay at eight hours per holiday. David, so that we can get it right for our record, is it Gray or Ray? Gray, R-H-E-A, Mr. David Ray. Okay, that is the motion of Commissioner Fitch. We need a second for this to work. 
I'll second. I'll second. Okay, second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Sheriff, thank you. David, thank you. I know you were hoping for a little bit more. You got a little something here. I appreciate you coming and the way you handled it as well. Thank you. Okay. Sheriff, thanks. I think that you guys are doing the right thing here. Uh, we needed to be we needed to be reminded of this to understand the impact of this. Okay, item number 16, approve oral and written reports. I marked on page two those INS funds. If you remember the last at the last meeting, some of them were a little overdrawn because the money was still being moved around. So all the bonds have been paid, and that's the money that's left. And then we'll get another 4.2 million in July to go along with this money to make this payment in August, the second payment on the bonds. And the 2004. You, you got your. You, you did get the. What, when did you actually get that money? I'm just curious. We got it in the middle of February. It was in February. Yeah, but it just goes into one of the accounts. And then we yeah, have to move no, it I'm just curious when you got it based on when I think it's the middle of February. Cheryl, I remember exactly when we mid, got it. Mid-February. Yeah, it comes. Yeah. It's a direct deposit. I think it's direct deposit. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, the other thing to remember is the 2004-11 bond paid off. And I believe the 2009 bond paid off. That's the one we're refining. It's the last payment. payment. Yeah, I believe both those, the March payment is the last payment. And that payment had been running how much? Well, on the 2004 and 11, it was about 250 a year, so about a penny. A little over a penny, a penny and a half. Maybe. I make a motion with approval. Motion is made to approve the oral and written reports by Commissioner Applewhite. Second. Second, Commissioner Parker. All in favor say aye. Aye. Item 17, consider possibly approved treasurer's report. Make a motion we approve treasurer's report. Motion for approvals made by Commissioner Fitch. Second. Second, Commissioner Applewhite. All in favor say aye. Aye. Item number 18, approve any budget amendments. We don't have any budget. No budget amendments this week. Item 19, sign pay orders, approve bill payment. Make a motion to pay your bills. Motion by Commissioner Applewhite. Second motion. Second, Commissioner Fitch. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay, time for closing comments. Um, I'll be leaving tomorrow to go to Austin with our Northeast Texas delegation of hopefully a couple of hundred people. We'll have, we have meetings scheduled with various uh, legislators and staffers. We'll, put, we'll host a reception while we are there. I will be there two nights in an expensive hotel, unfortunately. I'll leave tomorrow after lunch. I'll be back uh, Thursday night. 
Um, we have a newly installed defibrillator. If you'll walk straight out this door here, you'll see it mounted on the wall. Uh, nobody knows how to use it yet, but we are waiting to reschedule that training time and hopefully we can get as many people as willing to sit in on that defibrillator training so that we would know how to use that device in the event of an emergency. It's been rescheduled. Do we have a date? March 9th. Okay. March 9th. You know, he's volunteered to be the recipient. I don't know. But. It, doesn't, it doesn't hurt. Don't worry. We will watch it this one time. I, th I, think by, uh, I think by now everybody knows, but if you don't know, that they, we, we received notification a couple of weeks ago that we do have a new uh, district judge to replace the late Judge Danny Woodson, and that is Angela Saucier. She is uh, currently the Camp County attorney, uh, very nice gal, sharp lady. Uh, she was she received the governor's appointment there and will uh, is awaiting Senate confirmation here in the next few days. So probably about the first of March, she will be officially our new second uh, judge. And while there are other. Uh, female district judges in the Northeast Texas area. Angela will be probably a first for Titus County, I would imagine. I haven't, I looked at the pictures, I didn't see any others, but we'll have a female uh, counterpart for Judge Ralston. Probably in the next meeting, I'm going to bring back up the subject of a remodel. Uh, considerations for the annex and get back on uh, a decision on if and how we're going to start that. Several years ago we had made a decision to have that building examined by a structural engineer to see if that building warranted the kind of remodel work that we wanted to do. We've got some experience uh, here with a local uh, structural engineer and just want to bring this subject back up. This will be really new subject matter for three out of the four of you, Judge, um, excuse me, uh, as county judge and as uh, Commissioner Precinct 1, Commissioner Riddle was in on that last discussion and we need to decide if we're going to be doing something there uh, and if so, how we are going to start that process. That is all I have. Um, I think I started there. Commissioner Riddle, anything today? Nothing. Commissioner Fitch, any comments? I'm good. Commissioner Applewhite? I'm good. Okay. Commissioner uh, uh, The only thing I'd say is if we had a good school this last week and uh, we all, all uh, had a good time down there and, and learned some things and picked up some things I think that, that we can take and use in our precincts, so in our county. So okay. any any examples of anything that very enlightening? I'll pay for everything. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Precinct one paid for, for all of it. <laughs> so, Are they gonna stop I, all I, uh, unfunded <laughs> mandates? I I look there was something significant I think because I've been guilty uh, on a bond issue. A commissioner can't campaign one way or the other. It can't be far against it. it. Has to be a neutral position. On, on, a, on a bond, like issue. a bond issue or financing or financial thing, where the people are going to vote on it, whether they approve yeah. or disapprove. Yeah. The commissioner can't. If if we ever ask the voters to pass a bond. Right. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know that. You've got to remain neutral. Got to be neutral. Boy, am I guilty of not be being neutral? And, uh, well, now wait a minute. You say you're guilty. When have, we've never, uh, we've never well, passed. I, no, we haven't passed the bond. I, I'm not guilty, but I've been. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Yeah, and first thing hit my mind was the loop uh, over the sugar hill. I happened to be over yeah. there on a Saturday, and they had a meeting, and Phil said that. We want you to vote for this because they won't cost the tax in Titus County anything, state or river. And I said, shouldn't have been there. He's still guilty. have done the same thing, though. We won't have to I go to the meeting. He's still guilty, though. That stuff. He's still I guilty. You know, I, didn't, I didn't have any idea that it was not guilty of something. Illegal. All right. 
Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. A motion made by Commissioner Applewhite to adjourn. Second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Ray.